my long lost brother popped out of the blue and is telling me that he's going to get everything in the inheritance, not me. Because father didn't leave me anything, but I know that's a lie. Because I'm the one that was with father for our entire life. I'm the one who looked after him. There's no way this jerk is just in the will and I'm not. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to contact the family lawyer and tell him this. A week after my dad's burial, I, 26 female, was still grieving my dad's passing when out of the blue I get a call from Liam, my stepbrother, who claimed that father's will stated that he will inherit everything. Naturally, I start asking Liam some questions, right? Tried to make sense of what he just told me. But Liam did not even entertain a single question of mine and shut me down. His response, I'll oh, talk to the lawyer, sister. The audacity, I mean, not to be the person, but I am the real child here. How is it that I am not in the will? I don't know what to feel at the time, and I don't even know dad had a will, because you know, I was busy drowning in sadness to even know what was happening around me. Actually, I was relieved at first because I really needed somebody whose family and I thought that he was actually going to give his condolences or even comfort me since he was unable to attend our father's funeral and burial. According to him, he can't just fly back home from his travels in Asia since it would be too costly. I'm like, okay, man. I told myself to let him be because he's not even close to us, as he was always not around, so... I decided to just let it slide. Anyways, I really did not expect that the first thing that I would hear from him after dad's death was about his inheritance. He did not even ask me how I've been, and okay, first let me tell you how I have a stepbrother. Mom died before I graduated from college and everything changed. The house doesn't feel like a home, and there is no breakfast every morning, no kisses on the forehead before going to school, and I don't know. It just felt different. Losing the love of your life can have various effects on people, and Dad was no exception. He threw himself into work, perhaps as a way to drown out the echoes of Mom's laughter that still lingered in every corner of the house. The irony. After Mom passed, Dad's business boomed. Life, huh? Well, moving on, a month later, Dad worked endless hours, and I, trying to figure out how to become an adult with Mom's guidance... And then came Mia, my mom's friend. Now, when somebody says that they want to help, you usually expect some casseroles, helping in the house, or maybe a shoulder to cry on. But Mia, see, Mia had other plans. Yeah, you guessed it right, she became my stepmom. In the beginning, I was skeptical. I mean, why wouldn't I be? Mom had just passed away, and now here's Mia, mom's friend, squeezing herself into our lives. Now, you might be wondering, how did they become partners? Mia, being the supportive friend, started dropping by to, quote, check up on us. Well, before we knew it, Dad and Mia were inseparable. They spent a lot of evenings together, talking about Mom, sharing stories, and just finding comfort in each other's company. Even when things got awkward, there were awkward moments, sure, but there was also genuine laughter and the warmth of companionship found between two people mourning. If only I knew that was just the beginning— one day, Dad, with a nervous smile that I had not seen in ages, asked Mia out on a proper date. They went to this little fancy restaurant that my father loved. Then Dad asked Mia to be his girlfriend, and after just a few dates, well, they eventually got married in a simple and intimate ceremony surrounded by our closest friends and family. Dad, usually a man of few words, poured his heart out into his vows, and Mia, with tears in her eyes, Promised to love him through thick and thin, even when he burnt the toast. We all chuckled at that, knowing Dad's culinary skills were <laughs> still a work in progress. The rest, as they say, is history. So, Mia moved in. Suddenly, we had a new queen bee rolling the hive, and I wasn't sure how to feel about it. Now, let's be real here. Mia was not evil. She had good intentions, I guess, and she genuinely wanted to help us survive this post-mom world. But... And it's a big but. There's no handbook on how to step into someone else's mom's shoes. It was like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Awkward and not quite right. The house, once echoing with mom's laughter, now buzzed with unfamiliar energy. Mia attempted to recreate, or, you know, the morning rituals, but it felt like a low-budget remake of a classic film. <laughs> Close, but not quite there. 
I did appreciate the efforts, but there was an undeniable void that even the most well-intentioned stepmom could not fill. So, Mia's divorced and has a son that is the same age as me. The son is Liam, who studied in a different country, so I barely met him. After graduating, Liam became a freelance worker, so he traveled a lot, but his expenses during his travels do not match what he earns, so dad has to also give him an allowance. Now, you might be scratching your head at that one, wondering why on earth dad would agree to this setup. Well, I'm right there with ya. Well, that's what's been happening ever since. Anyways, Liam was also that guy who parties a lot, always has the latest gadgets, and loves to show off on social media. So imagine how much money dad had to give him just to do all that. Now, I don't have a ton of memories with Liam. Yeah, aside from his travel life, he moved out and rented an apartment. Not only that, but he also barely visits us even during family events or holidays. Well, we've all given up on guessing whether he'll show up or pull another vanishing act. It's become a running joke at the table. Oh, is Liam going to join us this year? I guess we'll never know. Or are we setting an extra plate for the invisible man? Alright guys, now back to the current situation where I find myself. I scheduled a meeting with a lawyer a week from my and Liam's call. And to be honest with you, I just had to calm myself down and make sure that I was ready to face all these legal actions once and for all. The moment I entered the lawyer's office, his smug face welcomed me, and after the usual human pleasantries, he told me that I could not contest the will left by Dad just because I did not receive my share since there was no suspicious concerns about the way the will was executed. He also added that being disappointed with the size of my share by itself is generally not a valid reason to contest the will. You know what I thought while talking to him? I should have gone to Dad's lawyer instead of Liam's. After telling me all that unsolicited information, he finally asked my name. The moment his arrogant, smug face turned to shock when he heard my name left me so confused his eyes widened and his lips parted slightly, as if struggling to process what I just said. He frantically looked through a stack of papers looking for a printed copy of which I assumed was my father's will. His fingers skimmed over the pages in haste. At that moment, I could not understand the change in his reaction. I was thinking if I said or did something wrong, but I'm sure I did no such thing. Then, breaking the silence, he uttered words that sent a chill down my spine. I thought you were dead. Hold on, what? Dead? The last time I checked, I was very much alive, kicking, and ready to discuss this will. Trying to shake off the awkward tension, I casually asked what's going on and if he's all right. I was half expecting him to burst into laughter and yell, Ha ha, gotcha. But no, he just mutters something about calling me later and asks me to leave. Seriously, after all the effort it took to get here, bus route after bus route, he wants me to turn around and leave? I tried to protest because, hello, I just got there, and so... I argue that we have not even started discussing the will yet, but what can I do? It's his office, right? So, after getting out of his office, I immediately contacted father's lawyer, so she could read me the will. Fortunately, I was able to meet her later that day, and that's where I found out the truth. Turns out father left 90% of his inheritance to me, and only 10% to Liam, and in any case that I'm not alive, guess what? The entire inheritance would go to Liam, with 10% going to charity. I was at a loss for words. Because of what I heard, because of the moment Dad had left me, my jaws might as well have hit the floor, and my face probably resembled that money mouth face emoji. Uh, I'm just kidding, right? I could not comprehend why Liam would say such a thing, though, that all of Dad's inheritance was left to him. All I could think at the time was that he was trying to pull a prank on me. I needed answers, so I reached out to him. After a series of rapid text messages and missed phone calls, Liam finally agreed to meet up, so we chose a quiet, quaint cafe. The kind with the soothing hum of espresso machines, because nothing says, let's talk about our family inheritance drama like the aroma of coffee beans. So there I was, sitting across from Liam, and a, a nice little cafe that felt like a courtroom, I could say, at this point. 
Liam looked irritated, probably because I forced him to meet me. I cut straight to the case. I asked him why he lied about the will and told him that I just met with Dad's lawyer, who told me that 90% of the assets were mine. Confusion was briefly seen on Liam's face, but he was quick to recover. He gave me the classic eye roll and scoffed a dismissive laugh that echoed in the cafe. Ha! <laughs> nice try! Claiming it was all a ploy on my part. He even told me that if I wanted some money, I could have just asked him. Hinting that my supposed manipulation might cost him his generosity. I could not believe my ears. I mean, the audacity of all this. In response, I slid Dad's will across the table, complete with lawyer signatures and a notary stamp. Liam just glanced at it briefly, then pushed it back towards me and asked me what about it. Well, I said, hey, clearly stated right here, I got 90% of the stuff. And again, he stared at me with a confused look. I took a deep breath and pointed the words exactly that were on the paper. 90% to Elizabeth! Liam started staring at me with a mix of confusion and disbelief did not seem to comprehend what I was saying. He irritatedly asked me what the heck I'm saying because Alina's dead and Elizabeth was my real name. That's where it all got cleared up. The name written on the will is Elizabeth, which Liam mistakenly thought was our late sister, Alina, who passed away a month before dad. Liam thought Alina was just a nickname for Elizabeth. I mean, seriously, how do you not know your own sister's real name? So Liam knows me by the name Ellie. It's just uh, that my late mom used to call me Ellie ever since, and so does everybody. Since Liam thought my real name was Ellie, he thought he was going to inherit everything since Alina's dead. Not knowing I'm Elizabeth. He didn't realize that Ellie is short for Elizabeth, and that's the actual name on the will, which is me. How stupid. So, yeah, I'm the one who's supposed to inherit the family fortune. Liam did not believe a single word I said, though. He just stated uh, question after question of my identity and demanded proof, which I could not do at the time since I forgot my wallet, which has my ID in it. I pay for everything with my phone now, Shout out Apple Pay. Okay, don't blame me for that. <laughs> After telling him that I did not have my identification, he immediately left and told me to stop pranking him. I don't know what's with this guy. I could have just looked for a digital copy if he just waited for a second. Oh well. So, yesterday I went to his apartment carrying my identifications and photocopies of my birth certificate. I don't even know why I was trying to prove to him my identity. We all make dumb decisions sometimes, and convincing him was hard. I handed over the documents, and there he was, squinting at them, struggling to accept the reality that I was indeed Elizabeth alive and well. I can see his skepticism as he looked for loopholes. Then he mumbled something under his breath about how anybody could fake documents these days. Come on, it's 2024. So I told him that I did not have to prove anything to him. If he does not believe I'm the Elizabeth from the will, well, that's his problem. After he stared at my documents for what seemed like an eternity, he finally said something. Apparently, he made a grand deal to buy a mansion with the idea that he had all the money in the world. The 10% he inherited was already signed as a down payment. And guess what? He then apologized for what he did and reasoned out that he needed the money so he just can't accept what other people say easily. He then begged me to help him pay the rest of the mortgage. Of course I refused and let me break down why. First off, this guy is very irresponsible. Remember how my dad always gives him a monthly allowance even if he already had a job? Asking him to handle these finances was like giving a toddler the keys to a candy store. Second, I was pretty convinced that he would not be able to pay me back, even if he promised his pet goldfish his life. Third, I barely even knew him. We were more like strangers who just happened to share a non-functional family tree. I strutted out of his apartment with my head held high. If he wants to live in a mansion of doubts, debts, and delusion, that's his choice. It's not my responsibility to take him out of his irresponsible decision. Look... It's not that I don't care about my brother, I do. But there's a fine line between being supportive and being an enabler. 
I'm not about to throw myself into the quicksand of his financial mess just to prove my support. So there it is. Am I the a-hole for deciding to not help my brother for a mansion he can't afford? Let me know what you would have done in the comments down below. What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. So we do have multiple updates to hop into. I want to go ahead and hop into update one because it is going to knock your socks off, guys. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, take a second, hit that subscribe button. Here is your update. Before anything else, I want to thank everybody for the condolences and insights. It made me feel better that I might have made the right decision. As for Liam, I did not expect him to go so far just to get money. Before we delve into the details, let me give some context. So, I was in my apartment minding my own beeswax, probably watching some questionable reality TV, <laughs> when I heard a knock at my apartment door. To my surprise, it was Mia and Liam, my stepmom and stepbrother. So there they are, standing on my doorstep with expressions that could rival Oscar actors. Mia, with her perfectly practiced concerned look, and Liam, attempting a mix of innocence and pity. If I did not know better, I would really think that they are concerned and thought that this would be a great time to be with each other's side. Mia starts pouring out this sob story through the door about how life has been a real struggle since dad passed away. Well, may he rest in peace. She said that she was now struggling financially on top of her emotional distress since father did not leave her a single cent aside from their joint assets. With her teary eyes, Mia suggested that maybe, just maybe, a portion of it could find its way to their pocket. She even suggested that maybe 50% of my inheritance is enough for them. You know what? That's absurd. I said no. I gave them advice and told them that maybe they could sell some of the properties and Liam could just give up the mansion that he wanted. After several failed attempts, I could sense their moods getting angry. So before the discussion led to things that we did not want to happen, I asked them to leave. I guess that was the breaking point for Liam. He told me that he could not just give up the mansion because he already flaunted it to his followers. He was afraid of what would happen to his image and fame if they found out that Liam returned the mansion. It was just too much for his fragile little ego to take. In response to his absolute meltdown, I gave him a reality check and I told him that it's not my problem. I mean, come on. Last time I checked, I wasn't the one who wanted to flaunt something that's not entirely mine. That's on him. That's when he shouted that he would sue me and he would get his money back and then went out and slammed the door. His money? What? After that interaction, I thought Liam was joking, but then in the mail, I received a letter from dad's lawyer stating that she heard that Liam was attempting to sue me. Yes, you heard it right. Guess what he was trying to sue me for? False representation. Apparently, Liam thinks he can take legal action against me because he doesn't know my real name. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but common sense tells me that suing somebody for using a nickname is not a suable. Can you imagine going to court and trying to argue, Oh, your honor, I demand justice because this person goes by her nickname. I can almost hear the judge face palming at the sheer ridiculousness of the situation. Of course, he was not able to proceed due to lack of evidence. Imagine suing someone just because he doesn't know my name. <laughs> His stupidity is not my fault. So guys, that's my update. I hope that they don't try to do something serious again next time. Update number two. Just when I thought I was actually going to catch a breather. Wow, a week after the visit to my apartment, Mia and Liam decide to do something absolutely unspeakable. They falsified the debt. Mia and Liam, in uh, their quest for what they believed is rightfully theirs, claimed that my deceased father owed them a mountain of money. You know what their plan was? To drain my finances, force me into settling these alleged debts, and redirect the funds that rightfully belong to my inheritance to them. This is their way of getting the inheritance they did not deserve. So, they tried some shady tactics to get their dirty hands on my dad's money. They made up these convincing sets of fake invoices and bills and basically saying my father owed them a ton of cash for different stuff he apparently bought. And get this, 
They even went as far as to copying my dad's signature on these counterfeit loan agreements and promising all these promissory notes, making it appear as if he had willingly incurred these debts. They made up these fake loan documents that looked real, complete with made-up terms, and when he was supposed to pay, yada yada, they didn't stop there. They messed with financial records, changing transaction details to make it look like my father owed them even more. To further intimidate me, Mia and Liam went as far as to establish phantom debt, collecting agencies, and completed the fake letterheads and all, sending me scary letters and threatening to take legal action if I did not pay up. Anyways, even if my father did have debt, and let me emphasize the if there, it's not my responsibility. I won't let their feeble attempts cloud my judgment or coerce me into playing their twisted game. If my father believed they deserved something, he would have written it in his will. So how did I know they falsified it? Seeing through me and Liam's shady tactics was not very easy, but I had my suspicions from the start, and as I duck into the so-called debts, things just simply did not add up. First off, the invoices listed stuff that my dad would not even need. Let alone buy, it was like they made a random shopping list and tried to pass it off as legit. When I looked closely at those loan agreements, they claim my dad signed something just felt off, though. The signature was close, but not quite right. Like a bad copy. Then those fancy debt collection letters arrived, but they were full of typos and errors. You would not expect from a legit agency. You know what? That's another red flag. I decided to cross-reference their evidence with the ones that I had from my dad's accounts. Guess what? The altered transactions were so obvious. The evidence strongly suggests that Mia and Liam are pulling off a massive scam. But I haven't taken any concrete action yet. It's tough, you know? They're family, and I never thought that I'd see the day when I have to go against them. But their actions are just way out of line here. I'm torn between wanting to protect what's rightfully mine and the desire to put them in their place. This situation has me feeling lost, and I'm not sure if I should confront them directly, seek legal advice, or maybe even involve a mediator. Has anyone ever been through something like this, or have any advice on dealing with something like it? I could really use some guidance right now. Update number three. Hey, thank you all for being with me up until this point. So, first things first... Thank you for the suggestions and insight in the comments, and I can't thank you guys enough. Like most of you suggested, I decided to seek legal advice and take Mia and Liam, my stepmom and stepbrother, to court. It's time for their schemes to stop once and for all. They must have thought that I would just give in and give them what they want, but no. I'm ready to defend what's rightfully mine, and I'm pretty sure that what they did was illegal. While talking to my lawyer, I can't help but stare at the pile of documents of Dad's debt. Anyways, we carefully prepared for the case, gathering all the evidence that pointed towards their schemes. As we entered the courtroom, I could not shake off the disbelief that my own family could pull something like this. The courtroom was intense. Their lawyer tried to paint their falsified debt as genuine, attempting to convince the judge that my father owned them a fortune. They presented their meticulously forged documents, emphasizing the alleged debts and cried about how they struggled financially because of the debts. What I did not expect was for Mia to take the blame onto herself. On the last day of our case, Mia confessed and admitted to orchestrating the entire scheme. She even claimed that Liam was innocent and insisted that she had manipulated him into participating in the scheme. Mia repeatedly told us that she was the sole mastermind. She also added that Liam had no clue about what she did as he really thought that the debts were legit and argued that Liam was misled into participating. Maybe they thought that they had uh, no way to win, so Mia just took the fall and I guess this is what a mother's love is. Anyways... For a long process, but the end of it, the judge ruled in my favor, declaring Mia and Liam's claim null and void. They were uh, not only exposed for their deceitful actions, but also facing legal consequences for attempting to defraud the court. First off, the court did not take kindly to their attempt to play the system. Mia faced criminal charges for forging documents, deceiving the court, and attempting to defraud me. 
The judge wasn't buying their sob story about debts my dad supposedly owed them. The court ruled in my favor, declaring their claims null and void, and not only did they have to cover my legal fees, but they also needed to compensate me for damages, for the emotional distress and the whole financial mess that they dragged me into. But it did not stop there. The court made it crystal clear that Liam would have no share with the rest of Dad's properties, and nothing was included in the will for him at that point, and I guess he should still be thankful that what he just got, and it's not something worse. Whatever the truth is, whether he was also a conspirator or not, at least he got his punishment. Leaving the courtroom, I could not help but reflect on the length people would go for money, even within their own families, and as for the gravity of the situation is sinking in, I can't escape the fact that these were people I shared family dinners with, people I laughed together with, and at one point trusted. The fight is over, but the scars of betrayal were still there. If only they asked me nicely, I would have given them some financial support. But no, they chose to be greedy and did something that they did not think much through with. And look where they ended up. Sometimes you just have to move forward, bruised but not broken, and hope that lessons are learned, even if they come the cost of your relationship. Final Update a lot of you are demanding me to update about what happened to Mia and Liam after the court. It wasn't good. From my previous update, Mia, my stepmom, was sentenced to prison. Yeah, she's behind bars, and honestly, it's hard to feel bad. I mean, she deserved that after all the things that she did. I still drop by the prison every now and then, just bringing her food and toiletries. She's still my family, you know. She sold some of the joint assets left by father to fund the compensation they needed to pay me. As for Liam, well, his fans got a hold of what's been going on. I don't know how, but a few tweets were talking about it. His fame was ruined and the company where he was working at fired him. Remember the mansion that he wanted? Well, he could no longer get the down payment because, well, he gave up on it and they already signed the deal. And since Liam has not been paying the mortgage fees for so long, I think the deal will be absolved soon enough. As for me, I bought my own crib. I could not bear living in my old house. It was a necessary step to distance myself from the relentless cycle of relapse that seemed to be triggered by the very essence of that home. The decision to sell my childhood home seemed too harsh, too final. Well, I don't have the heart to do it because of the memories my family created in that house. So instead, I hired a caretaker to live in the neighborhood, and I just visited the house from time to time. And oh, the family home was not the only thing I was letting go of. I sold dad's company. I mean, let's be real. I have zero clue about the ins and outs of running it. So I did the sensible thing and sold it to dad's longtime business partners. So I'm sure that the company is still in good hands. Of course, I made sure that I'll still have some shares just a tribute to the man who had built the empire from the ground up. Well, I also bought the apartment where Liam is staying. I don't know, I just felt that I needed to get a back a little. I hired him as the all-around guy for the apartment while he's looking for work. In exchange, he gets to live rent-free in the apartment while he's still receiving a salary. I mean, who would turn down a good offer like that, right? So guys, there it is. Thank you so much for being with me on this journey. Without this community, I'm not sure what I would have done. Who knows, right? Before I end this, I want to leave a final message. Whatever stage of life you guys are in right now, please don't do something stupid that will harm others. This story was the example of greed, and I'm talking about the prime example. I mean, this story could be in the definition of the dictionary for greed. Well, at least we saw Elizabeth, OP, or also known as Ellie, get the last laugh when her stepmother was sentenced to time in jail, all because she's the one who took the fall for it. But it kind of sucks that her stepbrother did not really have to deal with really bad repercussions like his mom did. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think of today's story. What would you have done if you found yourself in this position? And we have to mention how lucky OP is for even knowing to go after the inheritance. Some people might have been like, well, I guess I'm not going to get it. It says it right here. Well, there might be more to it if you look into it. 
Guys, I want you to have a great day. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It does help support it a lot, and I thank you guys for that. So have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.